You are watching the Mid-Table and Up podcast highlights. Please put your foot through that like button and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, as well as Spotify and the podcasts app. This is my oldest, uh, no, I don't think it's my oldest one, uh, 1998 French World Cup side and a certain goalkeeper by the name of Fabien Barthez. Oh my God, that's my number six as well. What have you seen Bart- him copying no, each other's notes? No, honestly, honestly, that's also my number six. Um, oh, this is brilliant. Yes, and we're going to reiterate because it doesn't seem like it, but we ha- genuinely haven't even discussed this going into this. Um, no, no, but- I can't. I mean, we sorry, we, we've had a couple of things so far where, like, in previous episodes, we've had crossovers on our list. So we've all had ones that have cropped up on one list. and then. But I don't think we've never had, to, apart from, say, the, you know, Aguero and the, the Leicester winning the, t- the title, we've never had... You know, like a six and seven come up together on the exact same list. But but yeah, go on, mate. Explain away, and then I will give you my reasons on Barthez. Yeah, so Fabian Barthez looked, looked a very good goalkeeper in the 98 World Cup. Uh, I think integral to that French win. Uh, he was certainly good enough for Sir Alex Ferguson to go out and spend so big money on I him. I agree. Meant to be the long-term successor to Peter Schmeichel. And was rubbish. <laughs> he made so many high-profile yep. mistakes. And eventually was sold very relatively quickly, and his career never really recovered from that. And he wasn't that old either. And it, you look at the no, he kind wasn't. of the, the keepers that replaced him at the in the end were kind of like Tim Howard. That was kind of the next goalkeeper at Old Trafford, kind of after Barthez. So mm. you think this isn't quality? It's not like he's been replaced by someone better. He's been replaced by yeah, no, like, like let's be real, like yeah, like Tim Howard was you know realistically a mid-table to Europa League level goalkeeper at best you know obviously he had such a long time at Everton but yeah you're right the level of the goalkeeper that they were like well this guy is an upgrade on Barthez for us that for me speaks volumes and and yeah I, I'm pretty much with you Simon the pretty much my whole reason for Barthez being here was it was because you know just how poor or at least below par he was for Man United um, you, you know, as a West Ham fan, the big one that I remember is the Paolo Di Canio goal uh, in the FA Cup where the ball has been played through and he was right, you know, he was just behind, he was just on side, just on side. The whole line has stopped. Bartes hasn't even attempted to save it. He's just stood there with his arm in the air and, you know, you play to the whistle, but he's just stood there with his arm in the air the entire time. Di Canio just puts it in the bottom corner and we win the game 1-0 and, and, you know, in a fantastic cup shock for us. You know, uh, Bartes, yeah, uh, just, as you said, full of mistakes. One that really kind of sticks in my mind and I'm really annoyed that I can't remember who they were playing against because it but it really sticks in my mind because obviously you know I would have been about six or seven at the time what happened was I remember the ball got played over the top of the defense and Bartes has rushed out and he's come out of his area and the ball was hit his hand and the referee missed it and then Bartes has obviously just kicked the ball into you know like up the field and I remember asking my dad saying Oh, Dad! Like, like, how can this? Ha- like, what? What is this? I've, I've, you know, the the concept of a goalkeeper handling the ball, ha- handling the ball outside the area. I'd never, you know, like the concept of that had never entered my brain before because <laughs> I was only six or seven, and for me, yeah, you know, goalkeepers just, you know, stop shots. And I was like, what's supposed to happen now, Dad? And he was like, well, Bartes shouldn't have done that he's lucky he wasn't sent off there and it was you know it was such a it was just such a flap as i said i'm really annoyed that i can't remember the exact team that it was against in the but yeah i remember seeing that and it was just it was needless really and as i said it's like bounced off his arm and he's just lumped it up the pitch and as you said it was kind of weird because around that sort of time man united kind of after 2003 they didn't win any titles until 2007 again. Obviously, you had the Invincibles and then you had Mourinho's Chelsea side in in 05 and 06 winning the league. And that kind of coincides with the fact that Man United 
didn't have a goalkeeper at the level of um, Jens Lehmann and Petr Cech. Yeah. Mm. You know, I don't I don't think that was, you know, obviously you can talk about how good the Invincibles were and how good Mourinho's teams were that won the back-to-back league titles. But yeah, the goalkeeper was certainly a part of that. And then it wasn't until they brought in Van der Sar. And obviously then that United team came into its own with Ronaldo, with Rooney, that they that they won three titles on the bounce, but yeah, I, I don't think Barthez being there at a time where you know they they weren't as successful as they were later on, or even and even before that, I don't think that's a, a coincidence. And obviously, you know, as you said, Peter Schmeichel, you know, a, a huge huge goalkeeper to follow. But the fact that as you said, the fact that they thought that Tim Howard was. Yeah. A, a good enough replacement, you know. As I said, Tim Howard was a, a fine enough goalkeeper, but he was never the level of a pet a check, a, a Jens Lehmann, that kind of level of goalkeeper. So, yeah, no, I, I I completely agree with you. And and yeah, my number, yeah, yeah, I went with Bartes exactly the same, same as you, mate. Yeah. Do you know now um, something uh, top fact about Bartes? When he retired from football in two thousand and seven, he became he got into motorsport. <laughs> Uh, and competed in the French <laughs> I think GT. I heard about that. Uh, I didn't know about that he was competing, though. Wow. Uh, and then in 2014, he also <laughs> went uh, in the uh, 24 Hour Le Mans. So, you know, maybe Man goalkeeping wasn't his thing. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. goalkeeping you know wasn't his what? thing. You know what? Uh, yeah, no, maybe you're right. Maybe that's what he should have been doing from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, saying that, he has got a World Cup for his efforts, but. Under European um, Championship. But, uh, yeah, no, and, that's and two Premier did, Leagues. Hell. Yeah. Yeah, no, he did. Yeah, I mean, wow. But but yeah, I, I do kind of love it when football players go on and do something that's not even remotely related to football outside. Like or like when they when they retire, mm. you know, like pet check going and going and playing hockey. That's the final whistle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Mid Table and Up podcast. If you enjoy our top ten lists, please make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Let us know what you would have done differently. If you watch this episode on YouTube, make sure to put your foot through that subscribe button and leave a like on the video as well as follow us on Spotify, the podcast app to keep up to date with the series. Thank you very much. See you next time.